How are we doing, folks? Well, um, one of the sources of kind of wayward handling in uh, Volkswagen T25 vans um, is the um, uh, bushes on the steering rack. Uh, there are four bushes um, on the steering rack where they're, where it's mounted onto the uh, the chassis, and uh, basically what happens there is that those bushes go spongy and. Um, as you're driving along, basically the steering rack itself is able to move left and right, um, meaning that you, uh, as uh, meaning the van moves left and right, basically. So um, a cure for this problem is to install uh, polyurethane bushes. Uh, now the polyurethane bushes are available in a, in a kit from. Um, well, many good uh, VW parts suppliers. I bought mine from VWSpares.ie. You can get them from Brickworks, you can get them from uh, VW Heritage. Um, there's quite a few places that sell them and they're all made by the same company and they're all basically the same quality more or less. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to actually have a look and see how the steering rack is removed because we're going to have to remove the steering rack, take it out, have a look at the bushes, see what's involved in actually um, putting the new ones in and um, uh, then we'll uh, take it out for a test drive and see what the difference is because um, I have obviously never done this job before but I've heard of many people who have and uh, the results are apparently profound so uh, I'm looking forward to this one okay so first of all um, let's uh, have a look underneath the van we're gonna we're gonna get it jacked up um, but before I do it we'll have a look and see where the steering rack actually is it is quite easily accessible on T25 which is nice um, but if you look there is the uh, track rod end. Um, let's see, that's uh, that's the track rod end there for you, um, and that goes over to you can see the boat at the um, the steering rack gator, and obviously that's on the steering rack. So you can see there, there's one of the bolts there, the uh, offending article, and there's a bush in behind that, and they're the bushes we actually have to replace. So do you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm actually going to I'm going to remove the steering rack altogether and um, do it on the bench. Um, because it really doesn't look like it's that big a, a big a job to remove. Um, we'll have to undo the two uh, track rod ends. We'll have to um, undo the uh, uh, the steering uh, um, the the shaft that comes from the actual. Uh, the, there's like a relay box um, from the that comes down from the steering wheel. So we have to undo all that. Um, but uh, first of all, what we need to do is we need to jack it up. Now I'm jacking it underneath the um, the lower wishbone. And um, when we have it jacked up, I'm going to put a pair of axle stands in underneath the um, the front uh, the front subframe here, which is the um, which is where the uh, uh, oh, I cannot think of the name of those bloody rods. Anyway, there's a uh, uh, you can put axle stands in underneath there. Mine has actually taken a knock before, so anyway, uh, that's where it's going, and that's what we need to do. So uh, let's uh, let's get stuck in. Um, incidentally, actually. One of the things about T25 vans is the fact that the um, they have all the components there to be actually a very good handling vehicle. Um, aside from the weight factor, they, they have double wishbone McPherson strut front suspension and uh, independent rear suspension trailing arms on the back. There is a, an anti-roll bar on the front and you know, so all of those components are there in modern cars as well too. As far as vans go, they're actually, they've got a very good suspension setup. The only thing about them is, is that obviously mine has a high top uh, roof on it which uh, doesn't help the situation and also um, bushes and ball joints wear out. So a lot of the time in order to actually get the most out of the handling from your uh, T25, you just need to replace the bushes and ball joints that are worn out over a period of 30 years. They don't last forever. And it's very hard to expect the best from a vehicle when you haven't you haven't done the basic maintenance. So it, everything needs to start there. Now I've done all the bushings and ball joints on the van and it does handle very well. I mean, comparatively speaking, let's just say, uh, two other T25s, but this uh, this should make a massive difference now as well too. An, up an operated anti-roll bar probably wouldn't be any harm as well too, but I'm not going to be doing that just yet. I may in the future, but not right now. Okay, so I have the, um, uh, the van up on axle stands there now, and I've left the jack in underneath just to, as an added safety measure. I actually put the axle stands underneath the jacking points, because the sills are very sturdy in this, uh, in this particular van. Um, so uh, there's, no, uh, there's no reason why I shouldn't. Um, so in order to get us better access, I'm going to take the wheels off next, and uh, then we're going to break the um, uh, the uh, ball joint there, the uh, the track rod end, and take that off. So um, uh, I'll get my uh, trusty impact gun set up, and we will start taking stuff apart. Now it makes good sense if you're uh, working on a vehicle like this to uh, to break the uh, torque on the wheel nuts before. Um, 
uh, before you uh, lift it so that you're not uh, fighting against it. But it, that's if you, have a, if you don't have an impact gun. But if you do have an impact gun, you don't really need to do that. Because uh, this happens. You'll notice my wheel bolts are a bit longer because I have spacers on. To be honest with you, if you're going to be doing a lot of mechanical work, just go and buy an impact gun. They're not mad, they're not mad money and you will be... I tell you what, it's the best. It's the best few quid I've spent on a tool in a long, long time buying that. I absolutely love it. So now we have to put it off. So let's have a look at our uh, track rod end. Here, now, that's the track rod end. And there's a, uh, a note with a split pin going through it on the bottom. So we will uh, we'll take off that, uh, take out that split pin, and we'll undo that nut, and then um, we'll uh, we'll take out the uh, take out the, the uh, track rod end. I'll wait until you see this, folks. You're going to love this now. And um, incidentally, it does sound like there's always a lawnmower running in the background in these videos. Uh, there probably is, actually, to be honest with you. It's the joys of living in. In a housing estate, that's a bloody nail. I did not do those track rod ends last time, and um, so I certainly didn't put a nail in there. Ah, oh, yeah, there's a uh, quality workmanship once again from the mechanic. That's why I, time and time again, feel like I'm better off doing the jobs myself rather than paying other people to do them because I do a better job myself, even if I'm not a qualified motor mechanic. Anyway, impact going on the on the case again. Now trust me, they can be an absolute nightmare to get off when you don't have the uh, when you don't have the uh, impact gun because sometimes what'll happen is the ball joint itself will start uh, will start turning and then it's an awful headache. So uh, let's get a lump hammer and see if we can break that. And if not, I'll use a ball joint splitter. Okay, so hopefully one clump with the lump hammer will do this. Oh. You know what? It was worth a shot. Let's just get the ball joint splitter on. By the way, they're brilliant. So. See that? Straight away. Now we do the other side. In a previous video, I went off on a rant about, um, about uh, rubber uh, components that you buy these days not being up to par. Now I replaced these top um, these top ball joints uh, not that long ago. Look at the state of that. I'm sorry but if somebody can't make a rubber component that'll last long enough to actually uh, protect the ball joint for a couple of years, they shouldn't be making them at all and they should certainly not be marketing them. There needs to be something done with the quality control here. I mean this is appalling. Like, I'm going to have to replace that. That's only a new part. I mean... Okay, maybe it's three or four years old, but still, it's still that being the case, I mean, it still should last a hell of a lot longer than that. Um, like, make them out of urethane or something like that, or Viton, whatever. Don't be using that shit rubber. Anyway, right, so uh, that's uh, that's rant over there. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's go over the other side and take the wheel off, take the ball joint off, and uh, then we can start looking at taking the steering rack out. Okay, so now the two um, ball joints, uh, the two... Uh, what do you call them? So, uh, track rod ends are undone. Uh, incidentally, the one that I did on the other side uh, did not have a nail going through the bloody thing. It had a nylock nut on it. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, right, we need to undo that and we need to... Um, yeah, we need to remove that. That basically is uh, coming from the steering wheel. So, uh, yeah. That's fair enough. We can, uh, we can do that. And... Um, we will uh, then undo those four, uh, four bolts and we should be able to remove it. And then we can have a look and see what we're dealing with. Okay, you do need to take the bolt out all the way, folks, by the way, because there's actually a, a slot in the shaft, which would uh, stop you from um, uh, removing the um, removing it if you don't. Now, what you can do is uh, you can you can try and tap there and see if that'll uh, go back. I don't actually know if there's enough room to... Let's see. I uh, see that's not doesn't really have anywhere to go, so what we need to do is we need to actually undo the shaft now, or undo the, the steering rack now, so let's, uh, let's uh, do that. Um, 
there should be, I don't know whether they're captive nuts or not, it's hard to tell actually at this point. Uh, let's leave them be for the moment and see what happens when we try and wang these out. No. We need to get a spanner on the back. Get out you. Now, oh there's a nice bit of heat in that. Right, okay, so that's that's uh, number one out. See there's a big spacer washer uh, on it. So, uh, there's four of them. So we'll undo the top one now. I wonder I'll be able to get the impact gun on the top one annoyingly enough, but we'll give it a go. Might need an extension. So unfortunately when you use an extension with an impact gun, it tends to take some of the torque away from it. The anti-roll bar is in the way. Might be able to just get that with a ratchet spanner. Oh god, they're stitched. Um, it would be a prudent move to obviously spray them with a bit of WD-40 or whatever, you know. But I'm just kind of been lazy at this point in time. So uh, what I'll do is I'll try and get uh, I'll get some WD-40 on them, and I'll pop them off with a ratchet spanner. At least we'll be able to get we'll be able to get the two bottom ones, and there's the other bottom one there with the impact gun, so we'll take that one off. There we go. Okay, so there's two of the four out. And then once we have that out, then we will, we'll actually have the uh, steering rack on the, on the bench, essentially, to replace the bushes, which uh, makes life a little bit easier. But I can tell you now, those bushes are, like, can we, if you move them with your finger, can you imagine how much a, a gust of wind on the side of the van will move them? That's going to make a, mass, a massive difference, I can tell you now. So we will uh, we'll break the torque with, actually, you know what, I get a 3 8 drive ratchet and we'll, uh, we'll remove them with that, go the old-fashioned method. Okay, so all four bolts are out now that hold the steering rack in, and uh, they did not come out easily to be honest but the two to top ones were absolutely stitched in and quite badly corroded so the bottom uh, the bottom ones came out easily only because I have an impact gun uh, but I couldn't get the impact gun on the top ones uh, not square anyway so uh, there was no point in just stripping the heads of them and um, so uh, uh, ratchet and spanner it was and uh, um, liberal application of WD-40 so now the next thing to do is to uh, remove the um, the steering shaft this lad here, okay, so um should really just be a case of just knocking it back and uh, hopefully it'll come off. Um, probably won't. Oh. I'm kind of thinking what I might do is I might might actually just undo those um, those bolts to go through the coupler. Um, I think that might be the easiest thing to do in this instance. Uh, yeah, let's do that actually. So um, they look like 13s again. So we'll try our 13mm uh, socket and spanner on. Spray a bit of WD-40 on them. Hopefully, they don't put up as much of a fight as the other bloody things. Now, here is where here is where Ross learns a little bit in that I should have um, actually undone them before I took out took out the bolts of the steering rack. I could put two in again, but I don't think it's 100% necessary. Let's see now. one out anyway, they didn't put up too much of a fight. Leave that there. 
There's an argument for actually replacing this rubber coupling as well too. But I'm not going to be doing it. I was like, why is it not turning? Of course the steering lock is on. Right, I'll go and take that off. Okay, so there's the two, uh, the two bolts out now, and uh, I'll move you guys back because the steering rack will just now lift out. Alright, so there we go, so that's the steering rack out. So um, we, can, uh, we can now go about uh, replacing the bushing, so let's get it into the garage and have a look. Okay, so here's two of the offending articles here and here, and uh, these are the new ones. So um, the new ones are split, so it makes them a bit easier to to put in, but what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll actually open the packet and uh, have a look. So there, uh, you can see there's two um, two halves with a metal sleeve in between. The old ones are not like that. Now the easiest thing to do really with the um, with these ones is to actually just cut the shoulder off them with a Stanley knife first of all, and then really with a, a drift and a lump hammer that should actually just knock through. Um, so we'll try that first of all, and if not, we might have to go down the route of using a piece of threaded bar or something to pull them through. So let's uh, let's see how we fare out here. Okay, so you can see here, I'm just literally cutting the rubber away with the bluntest Stanley knife in the world. They are incredibly spongy, so I can tell you now that, that would certainly not have helped the situation as far as waywardness is concerned. She's just using a blade because I'm going get in a bit deeper. There goes my blade. Some bushes are more difficult to remove than others. I don't think these ones are going to be too difficult to remove, to be honest with you. Um, they look like they're fairly... Um, they're, not, they're not in there too, uh, too hard, so... You know, uh, let's, uh, let's just move it out to the edge. And to be honest with you, I'm actually going to try and knock them out now, even the way they are. So, I have it hanging off the, end, the edge of the bench. So, we get a get ourselves a suitable socket and a hammer. Actually this, this might, might just do the trick to an extension, a socket extension. So we'll get a, we'll get a hammer. I'll just try and knock them out. Okay, they come out really easy. That's great, so that's, that's one out. So you can see now, they are really soft, okay, so that's, there's the problem with the handling, so to be honest with you, they were so easy to come out, you probably could, you probably could have done the, um, done the bushes in situ without having to remove the, uh, remove the steering rack altogether, but to be honest with you, it's not the most difficult part in the world to remove, um, so let's uh, take this one out now. Yeah, they come out real easy. That's great anyway, so at least uh, at least I'm not fighting with them. So flip the uh, flip the rack over and do the other two. There's no cutting or anything required. And the other one. Great. Now, so that's the four, uh, four bushes removed, and um, we can now go about installing the new ones. So, you can compare the old with the new there, right? So there's, there's the old ones, there's the new ones. So, they're what, you, they're what you're replacing them with. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to use the right grease, and if you look in the packet um, that the bushes came in, you'll see that it came with a little tube of grease as well too. Um, there it is there, okay. So, um, so what we do is we, we smear the bushes with grease, and we pop them in, okay. So uh, let's, uh, let's go about doing that. So I'll start over here. Get you guys set up so you can see what we're doing. So, little smear of grease. It's a special type of assembly grease, okay, so just make sure you use the right stuff. 
Now, smear that around there. Okay, and we can put that one in the bottom. Right, so that's, that's half of one end now. And we will take the, uh, we'll do the other one now. So take out the spacer, and we're going to smear that with some grease as well. So again, same situation. Nice liberal coating of grease. It's really, it's like kind of Vaseline, this stuff. Um, I don't say, I'm not saying it is Vaseline, in fairness, that's... So don't uh, don't assume that you can just replace uh, replace this stuff with Vaseline if you don't have it. But as I said all the Paraflex bushing kits that I've ever fitted have have come with the proper grease, so it's there to be used to use it. Okay, simple as folks. I mean that literally they just push straight in. So happy days, right? That's one done out of four. So we're going to uh, keep going, and uh, there's no pressing or drilling or anything like that required. It is a handy little job so far. Uh, the only thing I had any hassle with was the um, uh, was as I said the uh, the uh, seized bolts. But um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll dress them up with a wire wheel and um, inspect them, make sure they're all right. If they're 8.8 .8, uh, tensile strength bolts, what I might do is I might just replace them because I have some more 8.8 .8 bolts there. Um, so uh, we'll have a look at that in a little while. Anyway, let's get the rest of them done. Okay, there's the four in, and that was very straightforward indeed. So uh, I'm delighted with that now. Um, so uh, what we can do now is we can actually put the rack back in. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, geez, I actually thought that there was much more involved in this. To be honest with you, you nearly could actually do this with the uh, with the steering rack installed, but you know, I mean, the, I suppose the re the, my reasoning behind it is you're going to have to drop it down anyway. So that means you're going to have to undo the four bolts that were the ones to put up a fight for me. And um, you know, all you're doing in addition is undoing that coupling and the two track rod ends, and then the steering rack is out anyway, and you do it on the bench. So it's really not that much of an advantage to you to uh, to do it in situ. To be honest with you, it might just take you a bit longer to do it in situ as well too. So, you know, take it out, do it on the bench, and at least that way then if you have a split gator or something like that, which um, I'm having a quick look at, now is the time to do that as well too. Incidentally, for those of you wondering, um, the steering geometry should not be affected by this because of the fact that the um, I haven't undone the lock nuts on the track rod ends or anything like that. And they're going back in exactly the way they were before. Now it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a bad idea to have it checked anyway, especially if you haven't had it done in a long time. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean it's not generally that expensive. I think usually it's about sixty euros here to have the geometry checked. So um, yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's get the uh, rack uh, reinstalled. I'm going to get those bolts cleaned up first of all. Okay, so there's the uh, there's one of the bolts there um, that holds the steering rack in. You'll see they are actually 8.8s, so um, that's a kind of typical tensile strength for a bolt. So they're not uh, special bolts or anything like that. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to see if I have four bolts that are that size and just replace these because um, you can see the threads are kind of um, a bit in the stripped side of things down there. So I wouldn't really feel comfortable putting them back in. There's no point in doing a job half-assed. So uh, the rest of the bolts now, in fairness, you can clean up again as well too. None of them put, sort of put up a fight with me or anything. I'll put a bit of uh, copper grease on. The threads anyway but uh, anyway let me uh, raid my stash and see what I can come up with okay folks well uh, I went and did a little bit of shopping there because I actually didn't have the correct bolts um, to uh, replace the ones in the, the steering rack so um, rather than just saying ah, it'll do and throwing the old ones back in I actually did go and buy the right ones so uh, not only did I buy the right bolts but I also bought nylock nuts as well too for it so the steering rack is actually now back in and um, I have the uh, 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 track rod ends reattached to the hubs, but what I haven't done yet is um, attach the uh, steering uh, the steering column to the rack yet because um, I want to make sure everything is relatively centered. And uh, because I took the coupling off uh, the spline shaft as well as undoing the coupling, it's it's going to be all over the place. So there might be a little bit of trial and error. Now, fortunately enough for the T25, it's not like um, the uh, steering box in a say a bay window bus where there's um, a limited degree of movement when you take that steering shaft off and so far as um you know, you have a lever arm which you can only go, you know, it can only go a limited direction one way or another. The relay box basically, it just, it's a bevel drive that just comes down from the back of the steering, uh, the steering column uh, from the steering wheel, and then just redirects the uh, the column towards the uh, steering rack. But if you disconnect the steering rack, you can spin the uh, spin the steering wheel around ad infinitum, and uh, it uh, it doesn't really matter what way you end up. But what you do want is you want to hit, you want the steering wheel straight when you have the, the road wheel straight. So that's what we need to make sure now, uh, because um, that's the type of thing that would wreck my head now. To be honest with you, if the steering wheel was wrong, um, so uh, if I can get it as close as I can. 
it's worth doing. So um, anyway, I have the uh, I have the wheel hub straightened out. So now I'm going to go under the van and I'm going to do up the last couple of little bits and pieces. And um, yeah, we'll uh, uh, we'll be we'll be good to go then. So um, come on in and we'll uh, we'll have a look. Okay, so I have the um, obviously the the uh, coupling is undone there. If you actually push it back far enough, you can see you can just rotate it freely. But once you pull it back out onto the splines you're kind of engaged in. So what we can do is we'll put some bolts in loosely there and um, just see, actually the grooves are all lining up pretty well. Now the steering wheel is straight in the van, so let's, uh, let's get, a, get those two bolts in first of all. Bolt get, get one there. And then put it here first. Flicks of paint falling off the uh, anti-roll bar. Yeah, I'll see, I actually gave the um, the steering rack just a little bit of a clean. May as well while I was while I had it out, you know. Okay. So that's that is uh, that's the coupling uh, loosely assembled. So now what we do is we can put our C-clip on here and there's a bolt that goes through there now. I'm using the old bolt, uh, sorry about that now. Uh, we're using the old bolt but I have an eye lock nut for it so uh, what I think I'll do is I'll actually do up the coupling first because that's just going to get in the way otherwise. So, uh, spanner and ratchet. As I said, it probably is worth actually looking at the idea of replacing this coupling as well. I mean, it's another rubber component which can which can add a, a degree of uh, waywardness to the steering as well. So I might look into that. There might be a polyurethane one as well available, and if there is, I'd nearly do it. But for the moment, let's see how these uh, bushes do because I can tell you now this is going to make a huge difference because of how spongy the, um, the old ones were. There was a. Uh, they were in a very bad way, to be honest with you. Thirty-year-old bushes never really, uh, never really look too great. In fairness, okay, so that's that done up. Um, now we can put that on. So, so that's that. I just think an eye lock nut is a an extra level of safety, you know, which. Doesn't exactly cost much to do, but it's worth doing. So, again, knit that up now. You need to clamp that up, so you're afraid to pull it up reasonably well. It's done up now, you know, that's that's not going anywhere now. And uh, bearing in mind there's actually a groove in the, um, there's a groove in the, the uh, uh, shaft that goes into the rack uh, to stop the bolt from actually, uh, like to stop the coupling from coming off if the, if the nut drops off but the bolt stays put or even if that comes loose. So, uh, you're, you, you know, it's an extra level of safety there. So. Now everything is moving, and uh, everything's looking good. So we have, um, yeah, you can see our bushes there now, and obviously there's some up there as well too, and the others over there. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good now. So I'm delighted with that kit. Actually, it was a, it was a nice, uh, nice little bit of kit. So um, we will uh, take it out for a spin now. Well, I suppose it might help if I put the wheels on first of all. It definitely uh, makes it easier to drive. But uh, once we have the wheel on, then we can take it for a spin. So let's do that. Okay, so the job is done now. The uh, van is back on its wheels and um, ready to go out for a test drive. Uh, in amongst, uh, just just for clarification's sake, um, in amongst the stuff I bought down in the uh, motor factors uh, when I was buying the bolts, um, there's like an agricultural supply shop actually. It's not quite a motor factor. It's really good though. They have all sorts of bits and pieces. I bought some uh, split pins, so I put a split pin in the. Um, 
uh, the right hand uh, track rod end. So uh, that's that done. And another little gizmo I bought as well too, which I was quite happy with. This. I am sick and tired of swearing at bloody circlips. So I bought a circlip, uh, a circlip plier set. Isn't that nice? I always like when they come in a little kit box like that, you know, so that's a that's a nice little piece of gear. So uh, it wasn't uh, massively expensive as well too, so uh, at least now um, when it comes to removing split, uh, circ clips, I have the right tool for the job. So uh, that's always nice. So anyway, let's, uh, let's, get, um, let's get the van out on the open road and see how it fares out. Okay, so I'm off out for a drive in it now anyway, just to see how... Um see how things are and uh, so far uh, my first impression is that uh, the steering wheel is at about a 45 degree angle from where it should be so I'll have to put that right because that's going to annoy the hell out of me but um, aside from that anyway uh, the little couple of maneuvers I did the steering definitely feels tighter so it's very hard to tell at this early stage but um, you know I mean without kind of throwing it into a few corners and bringing it out on the motorway we won't really know so It does actually feel more direct going around the corners. It feels like when I uh, when I turn the wheel, the wheels turn. Uh, you know, I mean, it's less like driving a boat. Oh, people just pull out in front of you here, yeah. Right. I did a I did a little um, adjustment on the um, cable gear shift mechanism as well too. So um, because uh, a couple of the the, the kind of the eye ends on it were a little bit stressed so what I did was I uh, I cracked them off and did the nut let them go, go to their natural resting position and then tighten them up again so uh, there's no strain on the cable that shouldn't be there so uh, it, it actually the gearshift feels a lot like a lot nicer now it's um, it's a little bit uh, smoother it was never bad before but it was uh, it's better now all the same so what I want to do is I'm going to take the van up as far as the uh, motorway and I'm going to take it for a blast down there, get it up to 120k for the short spin, just between the two exits. And um, that should give us a better indication then as to how we're looking. But uh, I, like, I'm going around corners here, and to be honest with you, there, there is a big difference. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, it, to be honest with you though, what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to uh, do a list of uh, any of the bushes and uh, ball joints that need to be replaced like that top ball joint is in a terrible state I'm going to do that and the two inner uh, lower inner wishbone bushes as well too they need to be done as well um, they're quite perished on one side the place that did the brakes is the place that I get the DOE test done they should have spotted that I paid them enough for it like you know I mean shit service you know uh, I, I would pre I'd prefer that they found the problems rather than par charging me just to give me a disc in the window, you know. I mean, I want to, I want the vehicle to be roadworthy. My wife and child come in this van with me, you know. So, I don't want anything unsafe. Now, I don't believe that a pair of rubber on a, uh, on a ball joint is unsafe, but um, the, uh, resulting, uh, the resulting excessive wear on the ball joint is. So, it should be right. Okay, I'm doing 100k and uh, it's windy out, uh, which is the type of day I wanted to do this on, and it is straight as a die. I mean, there is literally... It was well worth doing so far. You know, I mean, uh, 100k in a windy day in this van, you'd feel a little bit of waywardness, but not now. Now, the only thing is, what I'm, ha what I'm finding is the... Um, there's a little bit of a wobble coming, from the, coming through the steering, which wasn't there before, and I believe that the old bushes were actually absorbing that wobble rather than the coming through to the steering wheel. But, um, yeah, okay, fair enough, you know, I mean, they, they can do that, but the, the, the corresponding downside to that is the fact that uh, any inputs I make to the steering uh, are also absorbed rather than, um, rather than going directly to the wheels. And plus, um, the steering, the, the wheels can kind of do what they want a little bit as far as the, the steering is concerned. So, let's get a bit of speed up here now. I'm at 
pull from the high top catching the wind, but it's not having any input into the steering anymore. So, I'm doing 120k now on a windy day. This van would never have been happy at that before. So I'm gonna call this a win, folks. Definitely worthwhile. Buy yourself a set of those bushes. They're not expensive. Stick them in. It's a couple of hours work at most. And then buy the bolts as well too, by the way. Yeah, you may as well, um, because they're gonna be seized, but they're gonna be wrong. So, um, yeah, look, thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And, um, yeah, we'll uh, see you in a future video. Thanks for watching. What a thing of beauty, folks. I'm just coming back to the, uh, coming back up towards my house now. After taking it around on the motorway, just a bit more. Yeah, I've said it, I've said it already, but I'll say it again. Go and buy yourself a set of these bushes. Bloody hell, it's really transformed the way this van drives. It really has. Um, the next, uh, the next thing I need to sort out though is I'm still not happy with the way the uh, with the amount of power the AHU engine is putting out, and to be honest with you, I need to get to the bottom of it. It's uh, I don't think it's 120 horsepower. I would have expected it should be given 120 horsepower. Maybe it's under fueling. Maybe it's under boosting. I need to I need to go to somebody who actually knows what you're talking about in this. So that's going to be another video, folks. We'll uh, I'm going to I'm going to start making a couple of phone calls and get get it down to somebody who actually knows how to resolve this issue because I can't. Uh, I, I, I to be honest with you, I well I might be able to learn, but I'm sure I would be able to learn, but. Um, you know, there'll be too much trial and error. Um, I just want it right at this stage. I've, I've, I've done the hard work and this is the bit now. I just let the expert finish it off. So that's going to be another job. Anyway, look, I will talk soon. Oh, and I fixed the steering wheel, of course.